Thanks. Thoroughly deserve that. Thanks for being with us. Look forward to seeing you next time on The Chase Australia. Tonight, McDonald's in a mass shutdown. 12 outlets across Melbourne's north and west closed by COVID-19 as Cedar Meat swings back into action and a nursing home locks down. Also anger over an infuriating graffiti attack on a Melbourne landmark. The AFL pushing for answers on how cat star Jack Stephen ended up in hospital with a stab wound. One brother jailed, but one walks free over a devastating assault on a senior policeman. How a pilot fought to miss houses in a dramatic crash landing. And footy back on the training track, but it's different to anything we've seen before. Live from Melbourne, 7 News with Peter Mitchell starts now. Good evening. There are new coronavirus closures across Melbourne tonight with 12 McDonald's stores forced to shut and a nursing home in lockdown. The Villa Maria nursing home at Bandura took action after a scare involving a resident. Laurel Irving joins us now and Laurel, all staff and patients are now being tested. That's right, Mitch, and we've seen in New South Wales, of course, just how devastating outbreaks can be in facilities like this, which are filled with vulnerable elderly residents. The health department here is not prepared to take any chances. This home is in lockdown tonight after a scare involving a resident who was running a temperature. Now, the home says that their first test for COVID-19 was inconclusive, but that the second test was negative. But this no chances approach is also being applied to McDonald's which has shut 12 of its restaurants across Melbourne after a delivery driver tested positive. A restaurant that normally never closes, now empty of staff and customers, caught in a growing cluster of coronavirus. There are no infections that we're aware of at those restaurants, but we wanted to take the most cautious approach possible and close them immediately. McDonald's learned yesterday one of its delivery drivers had tested positive. Overnight, it closed all the restaurants he'd visited, 12 sites across Melbourne's north and west, employing 1,000 staff for deep cleaning. All workers he'd had contact with are in isolation and the company says customers are not at risk. Our customers spend very little time in the restaurant and most of them actually using drive through at the moment. The risk is incredibly small. I've got no problem with it. Uh, we're happy. Uh, we're happy to go through the drive through The cluster began at Faulkner McDonald's last month when an employee tested positive. Soon there were 11 cases, including a relative who worked at the chain's Craigieburn restaurant. That person infected the driver, who then made deliveries to another 12 restaurants, meaning a single case has now prompted the closure of 14 McDonald's. Another fast food chain, Domino's, has shut its Fairfield store after a staff member there tested positive. And leading mattress manufacturer, the Comfort Group at Deer Park, has closed over a link with a confirmed case. Victoria recorded nine new cases today, including someone connected to the Sunshine Hospital outbreak and three return travellers. The site of Victoria's biggest cluster, Cedar Meats, has partially reopened. 20 workers have returned to the cold storage area more than a fortnight after after it was closed. All had COVID-19 and have now recovered. The health department says it's still not safe to reopen the processing part of the factory. We just want to be really sure that all of those transmission chains have been broken before we have a large number of people back into that workplace. Laurel Irving, 7 News. Vandals have hit one of the city's most loved landmarks in an infuriating attack. Paul Dowsley has the details from the Royal Exhibition Building and, Paul, it's covered with graffiti. Mitch, pretty much every panel of the entire southern side of this beautiful heritage listed building have be, has been covered. And they haven't just stopped at the building, they've also got wet. The vandals on Saturday night have got through, gone through the fountain here, the famous fountain, and uh, graffitied the beautiful statue that sits here in the middle of the Carlton Gardens. And that it could have been even worse if security guards had not disturbed them in the middle of this. They called police. By the time police arrived, they had gone. And this is not just some teenager who, uh, you know, had a sp spray can and was bored. Officers believe a group of up to 20 
were involved in this on Saturday night between quarter to nine and 9.30. So now the hunt is on for this group, helped by a couple of things. CCTV, which surrounds the building, as well as those distinctive tags that have been left on the walls of this building, which has just finished a $20 million renovation. And there's more costs to come cleaning this up over the next couple of days, Mitch. That will be paid for by the taxpayer. Paul Dowsley at the Exhibition Building. Thank you. The AFL Integrity Unit wants answers from Geelong star Jack Stephen on how he ended up in hospital with a stab wound to the chest. Stephen's friends have told Seven News he has no recollection of what happened. It's a night Jack Stephen says he can't remember, claiming he doesn't know how he ended up with a stab wound that punctured his lung. Jack's very lucky as we speak, so he's, um, he's recovering. Friends deny self-harm or an attack. The 30-year-old had spent the day with his daughter before a boozy dinner with friends. Players have certainly touched base, but in terms of detail, we don't have any of that at this stage. Nor do the police or the AFL Integrity Unit. Questions about the night are going unanswered. Stephen has struggled with mental health. It's come for the time for me to head back home and um, look after myself and my family. Last year, he played just seven games for St Kilda, but he's a popular teammate at the Cats. So we're just going to make sure that we all look out for one another and care for one another and ask if you're okay. Jack Stephen doesn't need surgery, but he will stay in hospital for a few days as a precaution. The club says there's no rush to get him back to training at the Cattery. We need to give him the space that he needs during this point of time and hopefully he does have a quick recovery and, uh, and then we'll, we'll assess where we go from there. Friends say the father of one doesn't want an investigation and just wants to focus on playing footy. Tegan Dolling, 7 News. One brother has been jailed, but one has been spared time behind bars after they bashed an assistant police commissioner who was trying to do the right thing while he was off duty. The teenager walked away from court with a community corrections order and a warning to behave. Isaiah Stevens walked from court hiding in his hoodie. Despite an attack that left his victim with bleeding on the brain and broken ribs. Last June, Isaiah and his older brother Jay spent the day drinking. The two of you were up to no good. When they were kicked off a train near St Kevin's College, they were spotted by off-duty Assistant Commissioner Chris O'Neill, who tried to keep an eye on them. What followed was a violent and unprovoked attack by two young men upon an older gentleman who was alone in a public place. It was savage and severe. The victim could feel blood dripping down the side of his face and he was in a great deal of pain. Jay was jailed for 20 months. With time served, he'll be free in nine. Isaiah was luckier. The judge took pity on Isaiah, claiming he'd been led astray by his older brother. But he warned him he'll need to stay out of trouble from this point on. I'll just be checking up both on you and corrections to make sure that you get some help. Do you understand? Isaiah's punishment, 200 hours of community service. A lot of people have put in a lot of work to get you this far and please don't let them down. I know you won't. Chanel Vella, 7 News. A pilot has managed to steer his crippled plane away from homes in a heart-stopping crash landing. It's believed he ran out of fuel as he flew over a housing estate near Bendigo. The plane came down just a few hundred metres from homes. A dramatic end to a joy flight that was anything but enjoyable. I mean, that's a pretty risky, you know, landing, so... He did well though to miss all the houses. We get plenty of kangaroos and echidnas and things like that, but never a plane, so something new. The pilot was able to free himself before emergency services arrived. The SES cars and uh, like the uh, police were there and the fireys as well. Yeah, so many emergency services. He left Bendigo Airport early this morning. Seven News understands the small plane ran out of fuel when he was mid-flight. When the pilot realised he made an emergency landing, bringing the plane down in a paddock. Could have been a lot worse, absolutely. So yeah, And the reports so far have said minor injuries. Up close, remarkably, there's hardly any damage, which would explain why the pilot survived. Civil aviation investigators will now try to establish what caused it to crash. The pilot was taken to hospital with just a few cuts and bruises. Cassie Zervos, 7 News. 
New transport figures show Victorian workers are slowly emerging from lockdown. Blake Johnson, it's going to be a very gradual return to the office. That is the warning from the Premier, Peter. Although the number of cars on our roads and the number of people using public transport is growing by the week. Victorian transport authorities are planning extra security measures, especially when children go back to school soon. But in other states, it's even more extreme. As Melbourne slowly crawls towards getting back to work, there are fears increased use of public transport is the next big threat. In Sydney, they call this no dot, no spot. Green stickers show where to sit or stand on public transport at a safe distance from others. We don't want people to either get the virus or spread the virus uh, on public transport. The system has slashed the city's public transport capacity to around one quarter. No plans for dots here. Public transport use is up 10% in one week. But Victorian authorities say there's still room to spread out. Instead, we'll see exclusion zones around bus drivers, school children sitting in every second row when they return to class next week, and extra cleaning. And we're doing a lot of work around removing cash handling from the network and ensuring that both passengers are safe but also, of course, that our staff. If the government recommends people stagger their trips, that's probably a good way to go, but they're going to need to provide more services across the day. Our roads are getting busier with a 4% increase in traffic last week. Still, the number of vehicles is only half what it was this time last year. Scenes like these worry the Chief Health Officer, so working from home will be the last restriction eased. If everyone just goes back to pressing lift buttons, uh, sharing bathrooms, uh, using kitchens, if we just go back to that, then we will do nothing but spread, spread the virus. Blake Johnson, 7 News. Almost $3 billion will be spent in a desperate attempt to kickstart the state's coronavirus-hit economy. The money will be spent on a construction blitz, including 10 new schools. The class of 2020 hasn't gone to plan, but at Williamstown High, future Year 12s have a new VCE centre and a theatre upgrade to look forward to. We certainly weren't sure whether these projects would still um, uh, happen, so this is great news. Two-thirds of the $2.7 billion will be spent in education. 57 schools will be upgraded, while 10 new schools will be built in Melton, Clyde North, Endeavour Hills, Wallert and Gisborne. The biggest school building program that our state has ever seen. The rest of the cash will fix public housing properties, train stations and roads, creating 1,600 jobs. And it'll be a great, a great boost uh, to carpenters, to bricklayers, to concreters, to carpenter, people who do carpet laying, plumbers across the board. Some existing projects have been fast-tracked, but others are new, partially funded by the $24.5 billion borrowed for coronavirus response. Bringing it forward is a good idea, but what the community wants and should expect is transparent accountability of how every dollar is now spent. They're using new borrowings to pay for old election promises. Some projects will be underway within weeks, while others will take three to six months. Here at Williamstown High, they're ready to go to tender. So we're good to go as, you know, once we get the dollars. Melina Saris, 7 News. The original face of Virgin Australia, Sir Richard Branson, could end up with a stake in the airline once again. Four investors have been shortlisted, including two that have close links to Branson's Virgin Empire. Administrators are hoping a deal can be done by the end of next month. More than 120 nations are backing Australia's call for an inquiry into the source of the COVID-19 outbreak. Senior Chinese officials have now admitted some of their wet markets are a real problem. One year today from an unexpected victory... I have always believed in miracles. ..he could be on the verge of another. This time, an international vote. We look forward to seeing, uh, hopefully, a positive outcome later this week. More than 120 countries lining up behind a European Union motion co-sponsored by Australia to investigate the origins of the coronavirus pandemic. To ensure, basically, that we learn those lessons and it doesn't happen again. The broader the coalition that would support such a motion, the better. But support within the federal coalition is fracturing, some calling the motion weak for not singling out China, one wanting the government to seek compensation from Beijing, 
for the damage to our economy. Almost two thirds of the 190 WHO member nations have already signed on to the proposal, but any one country can sink it with a veto. Australia hopes China doesn't do that. I hope that China will participate. I hope China will come on board. Today, a concession that the animal wet markets suspected of breeding the virus need to be cleaned up. Overall, the standards are not very high. And on trade, saying China remains eager to engage with Western nations like Australia, but can live without them. There's an old saying in China, if it doesn't light up in the West, then it'll light up in the East. Knowing for the Australian economy without Chinese trade, it would be lights out. Mark Riley, Seven News. AFL players have returned to their clubs across the country ahead of the season restart on June the 11th. Chief football reporter Mark Stevens joins us now. And Steve, it's fair to say training in the middle of a pandemic looks very different. Very different scenes, uh, Mitch. Small groups, no contact and a lot of separation. It's something we're going to have to get used to in months coming. Also, we're going to have to get used to some interesting things with footy as well on TV. I can reveal crowd noise will be added to Channel 7's telecast from round two. There's been a lot of work put into this. We're entering footy's brave new world. Welcome to the new normal. Temperature testing at North Melbourne and down at Geelong. Drink stations 1.5 metres apart and even fresh air high fives. And get ready for a new sound of the game. Seven Sport tonight unveiling its background crowd noise. This is round one's Sounds of Silence. Lynch, scrappy old kick, but not a bad one actually. And then Martin, oh, absolutely superb, and Revolt kicks his third. And what the same passage would sound like in round two. Lynch, scrappy old kick, but not a bad one actually. And then Martin, oh, absolutely superb, and Revolt kicks his third. It's a subtle modification to our broadcast as the heart of our broadcast will always be the game. We spoke to a number of consultants, um, all the way from Hollywood as well, and looking to see what would be the appropriate way to go. The viewers will have key input into whether it stays. The choice is always with the viewer. Um, ultimately, the viewer, will all, the viewer and the fan will, will, will decide, and we'll definitely be trialling a couple of things in round two. Richmond's set to play in the very first game with crowd noise. Coach Damien Hardwick spruiking without an ounce of negativity. This will be one of the greatest premierships ever won in AFL. You know, the circumstances that we're in, it presents an enormous opportunity for our footy club and our players are very much looking forward to it. Mark Stevens, 7 News. Tim Watson joins us now. And, Tim, it's great to see the footy clubs <laughs> bursting back to life. Mitch, it is. We've been around the ground today too to catch the players back in action. Coming up, the Star Bombers duo not wasting any time getting set for round two. Buddy's back, but will the Swans let him fly high for round two? And a war of words has erupted between the Crows and Port Adelaide. I think your mate Koshy's been in the middle of that somewhere. <laughs> yes. All that and more coming up a bit later in sport. OK, Tim, thanks. We'll see you then. Ahead, a family and police fear the worst for a missing father of five. But a town is staying silent about what really happened. The details, next. Also an astonishing find in a river. Machine guns in the mud. Why millions of bushfire donations aren't going to those in need. And later, how you can claim more than $500 for working from home. Seven News, brought to you by Aussie. Home. It's not just a place we're stuck in. It's home cooked meals, home workouts, home schooling. Working from home, home movie nights, and movie days. It's see you when I get home. Your home means more than ever, and so does having the right home loan. To understand your options, go straight to Aussie. We'll help ensure you have the right loan for right now. The Rankin sisters were the first to bring aerobics to Australia. You like to get physical, I see. We're like a household name. Welcome to 2020. I am Big Brother, and I have chosen you. Life doesn't stop at 60. And you think you can just step your way into being the last one standing? They aim to win, and I'm ready for it. I'll be the judge of that. I am Big Brother. Who wins? You decide. 
At RapidTune, we'll keep you moving with our range of services, from brakes, shocks to general repairs. We stock tyres from the best brands, are licensed air conditioning specialists and offer wheel alignments and servicing that will protect your warranty. RapidTune, we'll keep you moving. These are uncertain times, but the automotive industry has a simple message. Auto's open and we're open. Auto's open and we're open. Auto's open and we're open. So whatever you need, maintenance, repairs, specialty services, even buying a vehicle, VACC members are open for business. So look for the orange sign. VACC, you're in good hands. Hair can be really annoying when it grows in unsightly places. But the real problem is when you can't get hair where you'd really like it. Now, with Advanced Hair Studios Hair Fusion, you can have the hair you want where you want it. Call now. Just like I did. The stylish Havel H2, a globally engineered, European designed and feature packed SUV. From just 22,990 drive away, Havel H2 Auto, new car thinking. As part of Victoria's big build, we're removing level crossings. Buses will replace trains on the Frankston line from the 24th of May to the 26th of July. Find out if you're affected at bigbuild.vic.gov.au. Authorised by Victorian Government, Melbourne. Have you ever solved a murder? In June's Journey, you can. Refresh your mind with clever puzzles amidst the glamour of the 1920s. Are you up to the challenge? Download June's Journey now for free. At RapidTune, we'll keep you moving with our range of services, from brakes, shocks to general repairs. We stock tyres from the best brands, are licensed air conditioning specialists and offer wheel alignments and servicing that will protect your warranty. RapidTune, we'll keep you moving. Tasty, affordable and delicious. What's for dinner in the next break with Coles? Four submachine guns have been unearthed, buried in the state's northeast. The weapons were discovered at Lake Hume by a man with a metal detector. What we believe at this stage is the firearms are a um, Thompson submachine gun from the post-World War II era. So they're significantly old and they will be of great military history significance, I would imagine. The mystery now to be solved is how they ended up there. A police search is underway in West Gippsland for clues to the murder of a father of five. The Lakes Entrance drug dealer disappeared more than a year ago and detectives say the community's silence is making it a hard case to crack. Hidden in this dense forest could be the clues to solving a murder. Police on the lookout for the well-hidden tracks of a group of killers. Dale Pantic has been missing for more than a year. Silence from those in the know has prompted a search of the Bunyip State Forest for his body and his car. We're dealing with people that, uh, uh, that aren't necessarily the most uh, forthcoming uh, with, uh, with the police or, uh, or assisting in investigations. This security vision shows Dale Pantic's car leaving a storage business in sale two days after his disappearance in April last year. The silver Ford Falcon was also spotted at several locations in Melbourne. Detectives are convinced he was murdered over his drug business and more than one person was involved. The suspicion is the people the 38-year-old fell out with are familiar with this area, mainly through their involvement in the drug trade. Over the past 12 months, the major locations of interest have included Dale Pantic's hometown of Lakes Entrance, a farm at Perry Bridge where he was last seen alive, properties in Sale which have been searched for his body and now the Bunyip State Forest. The father of five has left behind a family desperate for answers. Our number one priority is to, uh, is to find Dale and, uh, and get him back to his family. Cameron Bow, 7 News. It took less than eight minutes to put out a fire after crews arrived at an Armadale cafe. It broke out just after midnight. The owner of the Matilda Cafe says he's just finished several hundred thousand dollars worth of renovations. It's feared the fire may have been deliberately lit. It's feared none of the $51 million raised by comedian Celeste Barber in a bushfire appeal will ever get to the victims. A million people around the world donated the cash. A court is now deciding what to do with it. A hastily convened Supreme Court hearing today grappled with how to spend the much needed money raised to help those ruined during summer's deadly blazes. 
January's Please Help This Is Terrifying campaign broke a Facebook record, with celebrity givers posting their donations, including James Packer, Chris Hemsworth and Kylie Minogue. We're on fire. The well-intentioned Instagram comedian Celeste Barber set up the campaign to give the money to the Rural Fire Service, not realising it can only spend the $51 million on equipment and training. Despite warnings that many of the intended victims would not get this money, Miss Barber lashed out at critics, saying she would personally guarantee the money would go to victims and wildlife. The Rural Fire Service is asking the court to rule that it cannot spend the money on that, except for counselling and training of volunteer firefighters. It wants to buy equipment and provide trauma counselling to firefighters, just as Michael Slattery reserved his decision. Brian Seymour, 7 News. Jane Bunn joins us now for an early look at the weather. And, Jane, the stretch of glorious autumn sunshine continues. Mitch, we have had nothing but cold and frosty nights, dropping to freezing or below in the suburbs, followed by sunny days that slowly thaw out. By the afternoon, it's really very nice out there. Today, the city began on five, ahead of a top of 19. This is now the fifth day in a row with a chilly start. We've had a large high-pressure system controlling our weather, with nothing but light winds and clear skies. Now that comes to an end tonight. There's no more frost. In fact, the, sh the city should stay in double figures all night. Now it's already fallen down to 15, but it won't fall much further as the wind picks up and cloud comes over. Now that is a sign of rain on the way. I'll have those details after sport, Mitch. It had to come to an end sometime, mm -hmm. Jane. Thank you. Next, how a man cheated death by minutes. He was trapped with no escape when hero firefighters pulled him from a burning house in Melbourne's northwest. Also, the real life Indiana Jones charged for spending a night at the museum. The horrifying moment a military jet nosedived into a backyard. And how you can help a little girl struck down after routine surgery. renovated is like a golden ticket <laughs> to the rest of your life. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. <laughs> this will be the transformation of the year. This is a house of our dreams. It's, it's oh my God. <laughs> it's all for mum. What they are doing is their best Renault yet. And I just can't wait to see Little get something that she deserves. Mum's Hampton style dream home on House Rules. Tonight, 7.30. Hi everyone, Dan and Steph here once again this week. We are here to share with you a great recipe that we love cooking. And tonight we are cooking a heart healthy dish from the Heart Foundation and Coles Cook with the Heart Challenge. Fish fingers with sweet potato wedges. It's quick, easy and your heart will love it. Okay guys, first step with our fish fingers and sweet potato wedges, pretty simple. We've got some beautiful fresh sweet potato, we've cut into wedges, we're going to get them into a bowl. So we're going to give them a good coat with this olive oil, just spray olive oil, onto a tray, hot oven, 220 degrees, 30 minutes. Okay guys, the sweet potato wedges are in the oven, now we have to move on to our fish fingers. So we have some beautiful sandy straits white in here. A little tip when crumbing is to make sure that you have one hand that's not dirty. I can never do that one. Here we go. Flour, egg, clean hand, and then into the crumb. We've got some cooked quinoa that's been cooled. We've got some panko, we've got some sesame seeds, and we've got some sweet paprika. We've finished crumbing our fish. We're going to put these in the same oven as the sweet potato wedges. Same temperature, but for 15 minutes. One more step to this delicious, yummy dish. That's right, guys. So you can't have fish and chips without tartare sauce. So today we're going to do a very healthy version. Instead of using mayonnaise, we're going to use low-fat Greek yogurt. So very simple, just going to dice everything really super small, really fine, and then we're just going to mix it all through the yogurt. So we just want to chop these up. It doesn't have to be pretty, we just want to quick dice it. Got a few different kinds of pickles. We've got the sweet, we've got the salty, we've got the sour. We've got some spring onions. Some fresh parsley, straight out of the garden. Quick squirt of lemon juice. Beautiful. Okay guys, what I love about this dish is the fish is going in, the wedges are going in, but they're both coming out at the same time. So 
Everything's ready, fish is cooked perfect, the wedges are nice and golden. We've got our beautiful local whiting that we're so happy to be able to showcase. A little bit of salad, a couple of lemon wedges. Don't know about you, but that looks pretty good to me. The best thing about it, great for your heart. So there we have it guys, our yummy fish fingers with sweet potato wedges, that's good for your heart. For more details about this challenge and lots more healthy heart recipes, check out the cookwiththeheart.com.au website. Help the Heart Foundation raise much fun and join in the challenge. Enjoy! A Melbourne man owes his life to brave firefighters after they pulled him from a burning house. He was trapped inside minutes from death when they carried him out as the roof collapsed around them. Before dawn, a Kielba house destroyed. The f***ing roof is f***ing collapsing and there's people inside. A woman escaped. She was just screaming hysterical. But a man was trapped inside his bedroom until firefighters Daniel Tinitali and Mick Edwards smashed a window to get inside. I managed to jump through the window, accidentally land on top of the gentleman who was uh, huddled underneath his blanket hiding from the smoke in the room. The door itself was on fire and there was smoke pouring through the top and side and bottom. 30 firefighters were trying to bring the blaze under control. It wasn't really too much of a, a stop and think situation. Uh, I pulled the blanket off, he was there. I picked him up, I moved him out. Firefighter Edwards here grabbed him on the other side of the window. He was curled up in a ball, carried him out straight into an ambulance. Given the intensity of the flames, firefighters had to work quickly to stop it from spreading to other houses. Nearby residents told to stay inside with their windows shut. It was pretty big and then the roof started uh, collapsing and so I just I panicked. We're happy to come and help out as part of the job. Paul Dowsley, 7 News. A girl is recovering from surgery tonight after she was trampled by cows on a property south of Geelong. Her mother says she's lucky to survive after she and her grandmother were hit by a herd on a freshwater farm yesterday. The nine-year-old was left with a smashed pelvis and a broken arm. The pair was trampled after a cow was separated from her calf. It was a night at the museum that ended in a night behind bars for a man accused of breaking into the Australian Museum and taking himself on a one-man selfies tour. Paul Kuhn, a 25-year-old German national here on a student visa, didn't want to talk about his adventure as he was released from custody. How was your night at the museum, Paul? He's also been charged with stealing an employee's hat. New York is beginning to show signs of life, many locals stepping out for weekend drinks despite the ongoing lockdown. The city's mayor is worried about a second wave of infections, but the country's president remains confident the US can get back on track. A city fighting for its survival and sanity. This might be the only time we're allowed to drink on the street of New York. After eight weeks in lockdown at the heart of America's COVID-19 crisis, this was a rare sight. New Yorkers turning sidewalks into makeshift bars, ignoring warnings from the mayor. If we have to shut places down, we will if they're starting to violate these rules. We're not going to tolerate people starting to congregate. It's as simple as that. Well, I'm not totally pleased with de Blasio. Police patrolling the streets bringing the curtain down on this one-man show. <laughs> 48 states have now started the process of reopening, but New York City is showing no signs of easing the lockdown. So businesses are taking any avenue they can to try to stay alive. The president returning to the White House today confident of a breakthrough. Tremendous progress is being made on many fronts, including uh, coming up with uh, a cure for this horrible plague. In New York, Ashley Mullaney, 7 News. A Canadian Air Force jet has crashed into a home, killing one crew member and seriously injuring another. The horrifying nosedive was caught on camera. What? He just crashed. Oh, my God. The aircraft had been performing stunts for the public in British Columbia to boost morale during COVID-19. And new videos emerged of the moment a firefighting ladder was devoured by flames after a blast at an LA warehouse. Fire crews battling the inferno were forced to rush from the building as their escape route right became engulfed. The they have to come right through the flames. 
Eight of the 11 firefighters remain in hospital. They are all expected to survive. A family is suing a Melbourne hospital after their young daughter suffered brain damage during a routine operation. Eight-year-old Taylor Burns might never talk or walk again after the botched surgery. Eight-year-old Taylor Burns went into hospital for brain surgery and emerged a different child. She doesn't talk anymore, she doesn't interact, she just sort of lays in the bed. Headaches led doctors to discover a cyst on Taylor's brain late last year. One surgery to drain it didn't work, so doctors at the Monash Children's Hospital operated again to insert a shunt. Taylor suffered irreparable brain damage. There is very little recovery, we've been told. Um, we'll get some things back, but the, the things that we'll get back will be at a, at a different level. The family is now suing the Monash Children's Hospital for negligence. We'll be looking at damages in relation to her ongoing care for the rest of her life. In a statement, Monash Health said a full review involving an external expert will be established and Safer Care Victoria has been advised. In addition to the emotional toll Taylor's surgery has had on the family, they're also struggling financially to meet her growing needs. Their home and car will need to be made wheelchair accessible for when she's discharged from hospital. So the family's launched a GoFundMe page for public support. Jodie Lee, 7 News. Next, a house fire tragedy. Twin girls killed. How firefighters desperately tried to save their lives. Also, how you can claim hundreds of dollars for working from home this year. And reveal how the AFL is sourcing thousands of tests for its mass COVID-19 screening. You've been gone six years. Do you recall anything from your time in captivity? No. Your DNA was found on the body. You think I put myself in the tank? Castle Stana Kavik in the riveting new series, Absentia, starts Tuesday on 7. In order for Lego, someone's in for some fun. Bet you love toys. You're childish. No, I'm not. <laughs> Outside, it's something to look at, but inside, it's a space to be. A space we fit our lives into. A space that brings us closer, that spans generations. Where we go to let go. In a Mazda, this space is 100 years in the making and summed up in two words. Zoom, zoom. At Rapid Team, we'll keep you moving with our range of services, from brakes, shocks, electricals and all your general mechanical repairs under the one roof. We perform all the vehicle services that you need to protect your new car warranty, as well as any mechanical repairs. Every Rapid Tune outlet is also a licensed air conditioning specialist. We stock a range of tyres from the best brands at competitive prices, as well as balancing and wheel alignments using the latest state-of-the-art equipment. Book online today at rapidtune.com.au. Rapid Tune, we'll keep you moving. Save up to 15% on your first year's premium when you get a new Allianz Comprehensive Car Insurance Policy online. Hey, good to go. Uh... Thanks. Get that uh... Leon's feeling. Search for a quote today. Good morning. More treatment. We're going to try something different today. Oh, oh, it's so pretty. Dogs bring out the good in us. Pedigree brings out the good in them. Even remotely, our home loan specialists can zoom into your home to help you save on your next loan. I'll save for those things. Shame. Toyota value stays with you. Like Hilux 4x4 SR5 Auto. Drive away from 53,990. Older feeling. Toyota. At Rapid Tune, we'll keep you moving with our range of services, from brakes, shocks to general repairs. We stock tyres from the best brands, are licensed air conditioning specialists and offer wheel alignments and servicing that'll protect your warranty. Rapid Tune, we'll keep you moving.
twin three-year-old girls have been killed in a house fire in New South Wales. Firefighters pulled the young children from the burning Batlow home, but they couldn't be saved. It's a particularly horrific incident. The two little girls, two little twin girls, can you imagine it? It's um, uh, just devastatingly sad. Their mother and older sister were uninjured. Authorities have revealed a wood fire was burning inside the home at the time. With many more Australians working from home, the tax office is bracing for a huge increase in the number of people claiming for home office expenses. You could be eligible for hundreds of dollars. For those uncertain how to claim, there is help. Brett Freudenberg is checking in with his students who provide free advice at national tax clinics run by 10 Australian universities. And so guys, what were some of the issues that we talked to clients last week about? For now, those catch-ups and client meetings are virtual. They're helping people who find speaking to the tax office daunting. We've had a number of clients who actually haven't lodged a tax return for five or ten years. Thanks to the recent surge in working from home, the clinics expect many calls this tax season, despite the ATO now offering a simpler option for calculating expenses. The new deal means you can claim 80 cents an hour for all your running costs like heating, electricity and phone and internet. You can only use it for working from home from March 1 to June 30. Regular hours could yield a claim of $556. And keep in mind, multiple people in the same household can claim. But you must keep records and only claim for items for which your work hasn't reimbursed you. You can also claim cleaning products or services for your workspace and for home office equipment you've had to buy, like a desk or a printer. But not for items you already own and now sometimes use for work, like a dining table. That's primarily something that's used privately, so you would really struggle there. Gemma Acton, 7 News. The AFL has unveiled a strict set of protocols to get the 2020 season back up and running. 7 News has exclusive details about how the large-scale testing regime will work. Not even our AFL stars can make it look pretty. Oh, I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy. It's the worst thing I've ever done. But this testing is the key to rebooting the season. And while other countries struggle to secure a steady supply of kits, it's been revealed Andrew Forrest's Mindaroo Foundation is behind the enormous testing regime. It's quite a large organisation across all the clubs, about 800 players. Uh, they're testing them twice a week, plus all of the associated ground crew and families and stuff. So it's a big testing operation, probably between six and 8,000 tests a month. 1,200 players across the country have already been tested for COVID-19. Every single one returned a negative result, allowing clubs to return to training today, the first time in eight weeks. By next Monday, training will be scaled up to include the whole squad, but players and officials will have to be tested 24 hours before each training session to make sure their test results are back before any contact is made. The Mindaroo Foundation says without the ability for asymptomatic testing, the AFL season would have been in serious doubt. Now we have the capacity to do this kind of testing rather than just testing, you know, people who present with symptoms. Anna Hay, 7 News. Sports Next with Tim Watson. And Tim, there's some fresh developments on what game day will look like from round two. That's right, Mitch. We'll cross live for the latest on a day. Footy players got back to club land, including smiles from the Bombers skipper. But will Joe Danaher be fit for round two? Damien Harwick's big call on the premiership as Trent Cochin turns water boy. A Blues veteran down on the first day back and why the power don't want to stay anywhere near the Crows on the Gold Coast. David, I'm signing you to the Home Secretary. Very good, Mum. She's got an agenda to heighten fear and to seize power. I don't need you to vote for me. Only to protect me. These plots do not always arise from outside. She's got you wrapped around her finger. This is a very dangerous politician. There's been an inside man all along. Bodyguard, Wednesday on 7. The power's in your hands and at your feet. The BMW 320i sedan from 69900 drive away. Joy is coming. 
thanks to Light and Easy, Australians of all ages can enjoy their choice of delicious, nutritious meals in the comfort and safety of their own home. Especially those at a greater health risk during these times. If you or someone close to you could benefit by having Light and Easy meals delivered safely with our contactless delivery service, visit lightandeasy.com.au or call us on 13 15 12. We spend one third of our lives at work, another third in dreamland, and that sacred last third here, from home time to sleepy time. IKEA designs around life's precious moments. So wake up happy every morning, even Mondays. Make mess, mohawks, and laugh until your belly hurts. Because with IKEA, there really is no place like home. Since 1880, the Salvos have been proud to stand with anyone doing it tough. Now, more than ever, please help us leave no one in need. If you're able, please give to the Red Shield Appeal at salvationarmy.org.au. At Nature's Own, we know that fatigue can be either physical or mental. Nature's Own Sleep and Energy Range can help you improve the quality of your sleep or support energy production throughout your day. You bet it's hard. Nature's Own. Be body smart. A lot of us are spending more time at home. Ow. Using a lot more electricity and internet. Unfortunately, iSelect can't help with your naked partner walking past your big presentation. But we could help shrink those household bills. Now's the time to compare, select and save with iSelect on 13 19 20. Australians of all ages are choosing Light and Easy. Light and Easy can even assist those on aged care home care packages. If you or someone close to you could benefit by having healthy meals delivered, call us on 13 15 12. It's never been more important to know what's happening to our great game. Our AFL competition will resume June 11. The Inside Story on 7 News. Welcome back. AFL coaches have been lobbying hard to increase the size of the interchange bench. Chief Football Reporter Mark Stevens has new details tonight. Steve-O, it looks like coaches will get their way. Well, Tim, Gil McLaughlin was non-committal on this. He said it was a work in progress. But in effect, the coaches are going to lose out. I've got strong mail tonight that the bench will stay at four and won't move to six. Of course, there's been a lot of strong lobbying from the coaches and at some stage they were assumed it was going to happen. But, uh, of course, there won't be shortened breaks to kick off the season. That's now out of play. Certainly hasn't stopped the Premiership coach and Damien Hardwick just having one last crack at it today, even though we will be staying at four. My preference is to probably have six guys on the bench so we can manage those, those players a little bit more. You know, I, I want to see the superstars of the game play every week. So the coaches, I think, will be disappointed, but certainly Freo fans won't be disappointed at all. Jesse Hogan returning to the fold over in Western Australia. It's great to see him making positive strides in his comeback. He's had so many issues, Jesse Hogan. And just briefly, of course, that 40-page document, very strict protocols. I'm hearing tonight that that could be softened once we get through round one. So if everyone's on their best behaviour, Tim, we might just have a softening after the first game back. Back to you. Thanks, Steve. The 2020 Premiership will go down as one of the greatest flags of all time, according to Damien Hardwick. Clubs hit the ground running for day one of the season restart, but a pair of high-profile bombers kept their powder dry. Footy's back and there's little time to waste. Back at it, lads, back at it. Although day one of the season restart was a measured one on the track at least for a pair of key injured bombers. Dyson Heppel only made a brief appearance but has returned to running as he manages his foot injury. A rare sighting of Joe Danaher at Tallamarine didn't last long either, limited to a few handballs. The club says Danaher is making steady progress, his running volumes have increased and he's building his offline running. Essendon will have a more searching session tomorrow. Nathan Buckley got an up-close look at how his star pies have come back. Jordan Dugowie and Jaden Stevenson relishing the return to Olympic Park. It is a lot different. Like I haven't seen anyone but my little group for the day. The Tigers skipper turned water boy at Punt Road. Our backs are all together. Our mids are all together. The connection of how we play is vitally important. 
The flag favourites confident of handling the current climate as well as anyone. I think it holds us in good stead. You know, we've embedded a game plan that we've been very fortunate to, to have you know, had three seasons playing. You know, playing this is relatively stable as well. Damien Hardwick just glad he can get back to his day job and leave his brief TikTok career behind. Could have killed my daughter for putting that on anyway. <laughs> All four seconds of it. <laughs> Wasn't the first time I've lasted four seconds. Oh. <laughs> Andrew McCormack, 7 News. Swans superstar Lance Franklin cut an imposing figure this morning, returning to full pace, full training. John Longmire says his eight-time All-Australian has fully recovered from knee surgery and is now focusing on making his body more robust for round two. He's timed his run to perfection. Buddy Franklin, the big winner of the AFL shutdown. Oh, oh, oh. Back in full flight, full training to kickstart the competition, 24 days out from footy's official return. He's been able to train throughout this whole period and uh, kept himself in pretty good nick, so conditioning-wise, he's fine. Still recovering from knee surgery, Franklin sat out round one. Now they've got three and a half weeks to make Buddy's body more robust. It's essentially about conditioning them so they don't get injured. It looked like Blues veteran Cade Simpson could have been the first to go down, tweaking his knee after changing direction. But after chatting to the physio, he returned to training. Co-captain Patrick Cripps has definitely been doing his weights in isolation, while Harry Mackay has recovered from his groin injury. Body's feeling really good, so yeah, full training today and if I get picked, I'll be able to play um, round two. Power coach Ken Hinckley isn't happy sharing the same resort hub with the Crows when they touch down on the Gold Coast on Sunday. We are arch enemies a bit. It doesn't make a lot of sense to put them, put them together. I don't have an issue with being with Port Adelaide whatsoever. We're going to go into a place and be all buddies. I'm not sure about it. And if their state border restrictions remain, they'd better pack a big suitcase. The West Australian and South Australian sides may well stay here beyond the first four or five rounds. They may well be here for half a season or more. Sean Sowby, 7 News. Dual Olympic gold medalist Kate Campbell returned to the training pool this morning in Brisbane for the first time since the COVID-19 shutdown. Campbell joined a raft of other elite swimmers undergoing extra safety protocols. Easy three and a half K. First step is always the hardest, but it was really good to be back in the water. Felt like coming home. The restrictions were so tough, she was unable to pass her phone to a friend to film her session during the contamination fears. World number one Rory McIlroy has put on a show in a Skins charity golf match in Florida, playing with Dustin Johnson and Ricky Fowler to raise five and a half million US dollars. Thanks, guys. The PGA Tour is scheduled to resume in five weeks for the Travellers' Championship. And Mitch, plenty to discuss on Talking Footy tonight over on 7, mate, at 7.30. Our special guests, Luke Beveridge, Nick Natnui and Rory Sloan. Lots to talk about. At least they're back on the training track. Yes, team. it's exciting. How good's that? Thank you very much. Jane is next with the forecast. Jane, there's rain on the way. Mitch, we have come to the end of a stretch of sunny days. I'll have details on that rain that is on the way next. Tonight, a 7 News exclusive. A pregnant woman murdered, the killer's appeal and the suspicious evidence. Incredible behind-the-scenes access to a landmark legal case to clear a killer's name. You'll see a mother and daughter fight for justice and their legal team take on the full force of the law and police. It's a rare case. We'll take you right inside it, including the moment from prison a man learns his fate after 13 years behind bars. Join me for a 7 News exclusive, framed tonight, 9.45. For every heart pounding emergency. That's the biggest damn fire I've seen. New 911. Tonight on 7. The Beacon Frenzy Sale is now on with 20% off all lights and fans. Update your home this winter and get 20% off every single light and fan this week only. Hurry, the Beacon Frenzy Sale ends Sunday. Tomorrow night, Click Frenzy is unleashing mayhem! Massive savings, the biggest brands, only for two days. Let's regrow. Register now. Clickfrenzy.com.au. Sales start 7 p.m. tomorrow. I love shopping online for my pets at Pet Circle. 
I can easily find thousands of products, all with the best price guarantee. These guys are like family and I want to take care of them. But finding their favourite brands is hard and expensive. Then I discovered PetCircle.com.au. With PetCircle, I save on food, treats and litter, all with contactless, free delivery to my door. There's no reason to shop anywhere else. And it seems a lot of people agree. Shop online at PetCircle.com.au. New U Foods Large Range. Introducing 14 new large meals that are big on protein and big on taste. A size that satisfies. New large meals, now available at ufoods.com. Every day, we work to make our networks stronger and more reliable. So even when we can't be close, we can still be connected together. If you're struggling to balance work, life and family, you need to shake it up. Ensure Health Shakes help you get the nutrition you need to help your body build strength from within with a prebiotic and antioxidants to support a healthy immune system. Calcium and protein for muscle and bone health. Put more balance in your work-life balance. Shake it up with Ensure. NIB members can now access and claim on telehealth consultations for a range of services included in their extras cover, such as physiotherapy, dietetics, psychology and more. Stay healthy at home. Search NIB today. The early bird gets the Audi SQ5. There's just a few days left to get your tickets in the MS Dream Home Lottery early bird draw. Hurry, the draw closes Wednesday. Get your tickets today. It doesn't matter where you're going, if you enjoy getting there. The BMW X1 S Drive 18i from 49900 Drive Away. Joy is coming. He's visiting, but now he's found a reason to stay. Do you always flirt with your brother's dates? You want me. Oh yeah, more than you'll ever know. But let's be honest, you'll never know. I'll leave you alone. Just say the word. Home and Away, this week at 7 on 7. This weather report brought to you by the BMW 3 Series. Hello again. The frosty nights and sunny days are coming to an end. There is rain on the way. We've now had five chilly nights in a row. This morning was 5.5 in the city and around freezing in the suburbs. Then that glorious sunshine let it rise to a top of 19. Wispy high clouds spread through late this afternoon, so the temperature won't drop as low tonight. That cloud acts like a lid, keeping the day's heat in. We've been in a pattern of fog and frost, clearing in the morning to generally sunny sunny days statewide, but today had some cloud pop-up. Now that is a sign of instability returning to Victoria and the start of a new weather pattern. A strong and large high has been in control of our weather, responsible for that run of frosty nights and sunny days, but it can't last forever. Tropical moisture is coming in from the Indian Ocean. It's meeting up with this low that is over the bite. We'll see a front here late tomorrow, then another one late on Wednesday. So rain develops later on tomorrow. It increases overnight and it quickly clears on Wednesday morning. In Melbourne we can expect rain from about midnight through to dawn. The next burst hits later on Wednesday. This one lasts a little bit longer most of the day on Thursday and it turns cold with snow developing up in the Alps. Melbourne's wet weather again on Wednesday night that lasts through much of Thursday. These two bursts of rain should affect most parts of the state. I'm thinking widespread falls of 5 to 50 15 millimetres, but some areas may see up to 40. Around the nation tomorrow, Sydney's run of showers comes to an end. Lots of sunshine and 22. Cloud returns to Hobart, but it's dry there. Showers developing later on in Adelaide. Shower in Brisbane and smoky sunshine in Perth. 
To Victoria, the pattern changes. There's much less frost, just this bit that is left over about the eastern ranges. It is dry for much of the day tomorrow until showers, gusty thunderstorms and areas of rain. They hit late afternoon and at night. Closer in, then we have dry conditions all day tomorrow, but the white shows the cloud is building along with a strong northerly wind. We haven't had that for a while. Then here is that rain that begins late at night. There is the risk of gusty thunderstorms and continues past midnight. The city starts on 11 ahead of our last day of 19. Rain develops close to midnight after a dry and breezy day. To the eight-day outlook, now that rain will clear around dawn on Wednesday morning and then it is dry again for much of the day on Wednesday. So Wednesday, quite dry, it's a top of 16. Rain develops on Wednesday night and that continues well into Thursday. That's our cold one, a top of only 13. And here's the totals that we could be expecting. Then just lighter showers Friday, Saturday, maybe into Sunday as well. So tomorrow, that's our last top of 19. We're dry all day, then that rain develops close to midnight, Mitch. Are we still on track for our record-breaking year of rainfall, John? <laughs> well, we are only in May. It's only halfway <laughs> through May. Um, but still, if it keeps going like this, which both of the oceans, the Indian and the Pacific Ocean, are both suggesting that rain will keep coming. So we are on track. We keep love you it. happy, Tim? I love it. Absolutely <laughs> love it. And finally tonight, speaking of records, a pair of shoes worn by basketball legend Michael Jordan has sold for a staggering $870,000. The autographed sneakers he wore during his NBA rookie season in 1985 were the first ever shoes in his signature line. They are the most expensive sneakers ever bought at an auction. Pricey wheels. And that's the way it is this Monday, the 18th of May. Thanks for your company. For now, from the 7 News team...